them. Walkies, I cried and dropped Streaker onto the whirling track. There was a sharp yelp as Streaker was caught by the carpet and held backwards at high speed. She shot off the rear of the track, was out through the door, rocketed across the kitchen and ended up with her backside rammed in the old front, open front of the washing machine, which luckily wasn't switched on. Streaker fixed me with a bewildered gaze, as if to say, how on earth did I get into this position? Her front paws were firmly on the ground, but the back half of her was even more firmly wedged into the washing machine. I ran over and tried to pull her out as gently as I could, but Streaker was jammed there like King Arthur's sword in the stone. Now what? Tina gave me a silent shrug. She can't move, I went on. We've got to get her out. We need help. Tina shrugged again. What kind of help, she said. Who do we ask? Plumbers? A garage? Fire brigade? Fire brigade! I leapt to the telephone. They get cats out of trees and things, don't they? Maybe they get dogs out of washing machines. It seemed a logical answer to me. The fire brigade could toddle around and they'd have streak around in a jiffy. However, this was where I hit our next little problem. I wanted to ring the fire station and have a friendly chat about stuck dogs. But you can't ring the fire station without dial 999. The telephone was answered immediately and I kept saying, Look, this isn't an emergency, but... The next thing we hear was, Dee do, dee do, dee do. Talk about embarrassing. Two fire engines screeched to a halt outside and moments later the house was full of firemen racing around uncoiling hoses and dashing upstairs waving axes, ready to break down any doors. Where's the fire, lad? asked the chief fire officer. It's not exactly a fire, I murmured. It's more like a dog stuck in a washing machine. And I pointed out Streaker. The chief fire officer was very good and he sized up the situation at once. Right, lad, he bellowed. We need cutting gear and the pliers and the grease on the double. Got a bit of a doggy problem here. Take care, don't hurt her. Tina peeped through the front window. We've got lots of noisy neighbours, haven't you, Trevor? It was true. The street was lined up with about 50 people. All ages, all colours, all sizes and all staring at us very hard and muttering amongst themselves. In the middle of this, Mum arrived home. Two fire engines were blocking the road in front of her house, with their orange and blue lights flashing furiously. Hoses dangled from every window and firemen were running in and out of her front door. She came rushing in, making even more noise than the fire sirens. Where's the fire? My house is going up in flames. Is everyone safe? The chief fire officer tried to calm her and helped her to an armchair. Don't worry, madam, there's no fire, but your dog's stuck in your washing machine. Streaker, cried mum, leaping up at once. She's being tumble washed, she'll drown. Oh, the poor dog, get her out. It's all right, explained the chief fire officer, calming her again. She's going to be fine. The machine isn't on. She just had a stuck bottom. It won't take long. At that moment, one of the firemen shouted, She's out, chief, no problem. And Streaker went whizzing round everyone, barking with delight, jumping up and trying to lick their faces, and generally looking remarkably cheerful and hurt by a little adventure. The firemen all had a good laugh about her and Streaker probably got more pats than she'd had since she was born. Mum made them all a cup of tea. After that, they climbed back into their glorious machines and tootled back to the station. Mum waved them goodbye, all smiles. Then she came back inside and shut the front door with an ominous bang. She glared at her exercise cycle, her tights and the old stair carpet. I could tell she knew there must be a connection between this weird contraption in the front room and Streaker jammed in the washing machine. Right then, she hissed, let's hear it. 
Trevor, and it had better be good. My heart sank, rather like the Titanic, only a lot faster with no survivors. It was my idea, Mrs Larky, said Tina, looking Mum straight in the eyes. Really? Mum sounded as surprised as I was. What was Tina up to? I knew better than to own up at this point. It was best to let Tina get on with it. I suggested we built a dog's exercising machine. I'm glad at the stair carpet. A dog exercising machine, she repeated. Using my best tights, I see. Tina nodded. I pedalled a bit too fast and Streaker fell off and got stuck. We couldn't get her out, I butted in. We were worried about her, so we <coughs> sorry, called the fire brigade. Mum finished off for us. For several moments, she just stared at the contraption we had built. She took a deep, deep breath and sighed. I think you have both been very silly. Still, at least it wasn't the police this time. Now clear up and get my exercise cycle put back the right way. You owe me for a pair of tights, Trevor. Larky, she went huffing off upstairs to get changed. I looked at Tina with relief. Phew, that was close. Why did you tell her it was your idea? She gave a little shrug. How many friends have you got? She asked. I was a bit taken aback. Friends? I don't know. I've never counted. Not all that many, I suppose. How many? She insisted. I thought for a few moments. Hmm. I know quite a few people, I strolled. I didn't want to say any more. I was too, in it was too embarrassing. Tina folded her arms. I could feel her eyes drilling into me. I don't mean people you know. They don't count. How many friends? Boys or girls? I asked, still stalling as much as possible. Either. Both, Tita answered. Nonchalantly, my face was burning. It must have been bright red. One, I admitted. Me? asked Tina. Of course, I snapped. She gave me a quick sideways glance. That's all right then, she said quietly. That, that was all right. What was she going on about? Anyhow, Parents are never nearly so cross with other people's children, she continued matter-of-factly. It's something I've noticed. Your mum would have gone on shouting for ages if she thought it was your idea. As soon as I said it was mine, she calmed down and went away. I sat there stunned. Why had I never noticed things like that? I think it's because Tina's a girl. Girls notice things like that. Well, that's what I think anyway. And if it's the only explanation I can think of. Mind you, I was just about to be more stunned than at any time in my life before or since. <laughs>